Hi everyone, it's Alexa. Welcome back to Alexa Play Me a Song. And today I wanted to talk about the concept of classical music being elitist. So I mentioned in my first video last week, my first video of the revival of this channel, that I am choosing to seriously pursue my goals this year and for the foreseeable future. And that goal, the main goal, is trying to get a full-time orchestral job. So you can follow my journey of auditions here if you want to. And also my second major goal, where I do have more control over the outcomes. Because in auditions, you can control what you put in. You can't always control what you get out, whether you win or not. In this second goal of mine, I can control what I put in and what I get out, more or less. And that goal is to become a background pop artist. Now stay with me here. Uh, this is where we get to kind of my dirty little secret as a classical musician, and that is the fact that I secretly, or not so secretly, love pop music. And I don't mean like indie, cool, underground scene like bands that are hipster or whatever. I'm talking about like top 40s, right? I unabashedly love the top 40 hits. Now, sometimes they can get annoying when they're overplayed. I can admit that. And it's not always great music. So I'm not saying that I love all of the top 40s hits. I don't love all of the music that's not actually catchy or good music or put together in a thoughtful way. But I do love a lot of the top 40s pop hits. And that includes bands to the likes of Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, and what else? I can't even name them. <laughs> All the K-pop stuff and some of the classic rock stuff that never goes out of style, you know, who doesn't like that stuff? But I did want to speak a little bit about how it was not only a little bit stigmatized in my childhood growing up as a young classical musician to like pop music like this, but it's also the general idea that classical music is a little bit elitist. And see what I can do about contextualizing that as a classical musician who also loves the popular music of the time and doesn't think that music should be valued in an exclusive way. So back to the beginning of my journey, I started learning the violin from my father, who is also a classical musician. My parents were not the biggest fans of pop music, so we never grew up listening to that stuff. We never listened to the radio unless it was the classical station, and we had a couple of more pop-themed CDs <laughs> to the effect of the James Bond soundtrack, so I know all of those theme songs better than I care to admit. But we mainly grew up listening to classical music. And what's more, some of the attitudes that I was exposed to about pop music and the culture around it was that it was somehow less than or lower than. So it's almost like the idea that classical music is elitist goes hand in hand with the idea that pop music is low class in some ways. And I disagree with both of these ideas. <laughs> Perhaps it's an idealistic disagreement, but I disagree with both of these ideas nonetheless. I don't know if I'm the only young classical musician that grew up with this idea about pop music, or if anybody else's growing up experience, if anybody else's parents think that modern music is trash, <laughs> let me know, drop a comment if you're watching this and you have that experience, I'd love to hear about it. But going back to my journey once again, I've reached this point in my life where I developed enough self-confidence to admit that I like pop music and I don't really care who's gonna judge me for it. Perhaps it's reaching the age of 30 and letting go of a lot of general fear of judgment in my life. But I'm finally at the point where I can unabashedly tell people that one of my dreams as a musician is to become a pop artist and provide background music. Not even a, not even a solo act or anything like that, but I would just love to provide pop music as the background for functions and events and in public spaces, just for a little bit of fun. I would also like to argue that even the most overplayed pop song can have a new sense of charm when it's presented on a lovely instrument such as the viola, or in particular, an instrument that you don't usually hear it on. So I do have a looping setup, loop pedal and a speaker. I need to get a pickup to be able to do this in public. I'm still not there yet. I'm working on this dream. I'm not at the fruition of my dream. But once again, I'm sharing on here with the hope that I will feel the increased sense of accountability and start putting in the real work to achieve this goal, which is possible based on the work that I do and not on a subjective outcome from an audition panel. So in this way, I hope to increase my sense of musical satisfaction, perhaps, increase my sense that I've not failed completely in pursuing music as a career because I haven't got that full-time orchestral job. So I'm committing 
I'm committing to it. I wanted to have my cover of Eye of the Tiger ready <laughs> for this video release. I'm not sure that I've managed to do that, but that's the spirit in which I'm approaching these first few videos on this channel especially. So, I'm a classical musician who, not so secretly, unironically, loves pop music. And what am I gonna do about it? I'm gonna create my own program of covers, perhaps accompanied with the story of my life thus far, and try to get into some local venues. And hopefully I'll be able to do this by the end of next year. That'll be the goal. You heard it here first, people. You heard it here first. For full transparency, I do have several auditions coming up this season that take priority. So you may or may not see some pop covers on here before the end of the year. You will see maybe some excerpts and practice updates in the shorts, and hopefully some live streams as well. It's gonna be a new thing for me to try, but the hope is to do some live streams of the standard orchestral excerpt repertoire as well as my actual work repertoire so that I can be better prepared for my actual job. I believe in putting that good karma out into the universe. If I show the world that I can be super prepared and do my current job well, maybe I will be rewarded with the next step in my career. Who knows? And then finally going back to the idea that classical music is elitist in itself. I think historically classical music was both elitist and not, right? There was a lot of music that happened in courts, but there was also music that happened everywhere. And before instruments were electrified, I suppose music by default was classical, right? Even the folk music from back in those days before electricity would probably be considered more classical today. And then when instruments became electrified and full-scale concerts became more of a thing and different genres began to emerge, I think the difference between the acoustic and the electric kind of aided in this conception that one was more elite than the other, or perhaps the acoustic version became less accessible to the normal person, or it became much more event focused, right? In today's modern world, we see classical musicians in the movies, movie soundtracks. We don't even see them, but they provide soundtracks for movies. We see them at weddings, occasions, corporate functions. But to see a symphony, a piece, right, a symphony work performed, we have to go and see a symphony, the group. We have to go see an orchestra. We have to buy a ticket and go sit in a venue. Even though this music is kind of all around us in examples of pop culture, as far as being used as a backdrop for things. To see classical music as the main event, it does require us to go a little bit out of our way. So in that regard, it perhaps is somewhat elitist in that we need the time and the resources to be able to go and do that. If any of you live in Omaha, though, <laughs> hit me up and I will try to get you some comp tickets for a classical symphony show here. Regardless of the history of the matter, though, and I'll be honest, history was never my specialty, I would like to work towards classical music being less and less elitist, both in the terms of musicians entering into it and as players, as people who are going to interact with the music with an instrument, and people listening to it. I think it's for everybody to enjoy. All music is for everybody to enjoy, just as I can enjoy pop music in an unabashed way. People who enjoy pop music can also turn to classical music in an unabashed way and not feel like they're joining some elitist club by doing so, or that they need to know certain things before being able to interact with classical musicians. And I guess that's part of why I'm here as well. Maybe this channel will eventually develop to answer people's questions about music in addition to being focused on the instrument I play, the viola. But we'll see. That would be my dream. Kind of like the channel Two Set Violin is doing, making their very niche classical violin knowledge more of a widespread, entertaining thing to watch. And it's about time the violists had some players for our side in this field of musical entertainment, right? Maybe I need to find a friend on the viola and make the Two Set Viola channel. If you're watching this and you have any thoughts about making classical music more accessible, please let me know in the comments. Part of this used to be my job. I used to be one of the community embedded musicians in Houston, and we would take our classical programs, our small classical programs with two to four musicians out to community venues. And we do some of this in Omaha too, but I would love to hear your ideas. And hopefully before too long, you'll see some of my own background music pop covers here on this channel too. I did already do a few. They're kind of low quality, but if you want to check some out, I'll link one up here and you can go digging if you feel like it. All right, <laughs> bye for now. And if you feel like tuning in, I'll see you in the next one.